he appeared to just break out in a very vibrant kind of way and say, but you know, we've always been able to turn a minus into a plus, that uh, <clears throat> trouble doesn't last always. And yes, we're going back to Memphis, and we're going to Washington, and we're going to win, that poor people must have a job on income, that every child must be able to get his mind developed, that, that hunger is immoral and it certainly should be illegal, that we don't have any choice but to fight. And, and I've already seen a new glory. I, I've seen a promised land and that we just cannot turn around. Then, of course, we went to Memphis the next week, at which time uh, there had been numerous threats. The, the plane had actually been held up because of a bomb threat. And then we had to have a very joyful meeting uh, that morning, that afternoon. Uh, ben Branch and I were coming across the courtyard at the Lorraine Hotel. And Andy Young was there, and Reverend Bevel, and Chauncey Eskridge, and Bernard Lee, and most of the executive staff, and Jose Williams. And uh, he called out to me and asked me, was I ready to go to dinner? We were to have a conference that night at Reverend Billy Kyle's house, and I said, yes. And then he recognized Ben Branch, who he had heard play uh, Precious Lord at one of the bread baskets Saturday meetings here, and told Ben to be certain to play my song for me tonight. Uh, it's very dear to me, and I know you're going to play it very well. And he asked me again, said, are you ready to go to dinner? And I said, yes. And he looked at Ben again and said, be certain to play my song, Precious Lord. And I said, OK, Doc. And he said, he began to lean up off of the, ban of, of the banister. And just as he started away, I said, Doc, I called him and looked back. And just as he looked back, the shot was fired. And it is significant to me that he went through this trauma uh, in route to his own crucifixion uh, for the sake of peace in the world, but that he went with the conviction that he was not alone. And he asked the Lord to take his hand. And through these kind of crises, he would often say, I cannot depend upon the economy or the political order, but it is the Lord that sustains me and that has redeemed me. And it is so fitting that he went out uh, asking the precious Lord to lead his hand. And that is literally the way he left. And there's a smile on his face, uh, on his face, with joy in his heart, and with the determination that he was right. And the experiences of the past few days indicate that his prophecy was both profound and accurate. In my way, Lord, sometimes grows drear. Oh, my precious Lord. Dr. King asked that he be referred to as a drum major for justice, a drum major for peace, a drum major for righteousness. And the most fitting memorial we can create for him is to join hands in building a nation of dignity, of justice and plenty for all in a world at peace. We are deeply grateful to the Reverend Jesse Jackson, to the Reverend Clay Evans, to Lois Barrett Campbell, and the SELC Operation Breadbasket Choir for joining us in this Easter tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. At my feet, every one of my steps, hold my hand. Take my hand. 
Why? 